We're about to go live and boom. Hey guys, Tim Richardson here. Thanks for joining us to learn about the five big buying mistakes that you can avoid when you're shopping for an RV. If that's what you're looking to buy in an RV, then you're in the right spot. <laughs> Thanks for uh, taking time to hang out with us for a little bit. And uh, our goal today is to get all your questions answered. And uh, I brought in a special guest expert. Uh, his name is Blake Wright. I'll introduce him again here in a second once we get everybody logged in. Thanks for joining us, Blake. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. So while you get logged in, go ahead and find the chat area. This is where you're going to ask your questions and go ahead and just type in what city you're watching from. And we'll do some shout outs while we get everybody in here and get ready to roll. Got some uh, big tips for you. Got a really big one too. I think you're going to be excited about uh, because I know it'll save you a lot of money, uh, even beyond just RVs. So yes, pretty cool. So get that one ready. Like I want to show <laughs> later when we start talking about financing. So definitely. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So we're going to record the session today. So you don't have to worry about getting every note taken down. You'll get an email about three hours after the webinar with a link to a replay. So you'll have that. All right, folks, got some people. We got Michael down in Arizona. Michael Las, Las yeah. Vegas, Judy. Uh -huh. You got to bring the, take yeah. me down to the casino. <laughs> uh, we have Texas. I mean, thanks for joining us. Uh, we have Steve out in California. Still morning out there. Good morning. And we have Marona in Texas. We have Naples, Florida. Brenda, that sounds fun and nice and warm. Yeah, what is it today where we're – I'm in Cleveland, so it's like 50 degrees. Oh, here is like a high of 48. <laughs> and it's cloudy and yeah. not a very happy day out there. You can notice. Rick, good afternoon from Maryland. Thanks, thanks. Michael in Fort Myers and Georgia, all kinds of stuff. Man, let's get into it. Uh, I'm excited. We've got some – oh, goodness. What's that picture? Okay. <laughs> that is actually me. Uh, that's my dad's uh, first RV he built for us. <laughs> I don't recommend building one, but he built this little camp topper. And the wow. kind of was um, when we were little, we were up in British Columbia, Canada, wanted to go on a vacation to Boot Lake. And on our way back there, this tree that you see in the top right of the picture right below, yeah. that is uh, that thing fell over before we got there and blocked the only way into this vacation spot, the lake. And so we had to wait for the forestry service. So we had to actually camp all night there. And so this is a little lean to that we built. And man, I tell you that night, I'll never forget. I remember <laughs> waking up, I was like two or three in the morning. I don't know what time exactly, but I remember shaking my mom like, I want to sleep in the camp. I want to sleep in the RV. So, <laughs> um, so we, uh, we went into the, slept inside the truck, back of the RV thing. And the next morning, my brothers were walking around our little campsite. Mm -hmm. And I kid you not, like, they found huge black bear prints. Oh, no. A little kid, they were there like that big. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how big they were, but uh, I was like, man, now I think back about it. And I was like, man, RVs saved my life. So <laughs> that's so hot in my life for RVs, <laughs> my heart for RVs. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I help produce a big virtual RV show and between RV shows and webinars probably help 90 some thousand people like yourselves. Yeah. Get some information. And that's kind of our goal. The owners of RV wholesalers uh, where Blake is uh, uh, one of the, the guys that helps connect people to the right RVs for them. And that's why he's got all this expert experience. <laughs> really has some great stories for us too, right? Blake? Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, so RV wholesalers, the owners said, Hey Tim, uh, even though you're not on payroll and uh, we just want you to uh, come alongside us and help educate folks. Cause obviously RV wholesalers can't sell, uh, you know, more than 5,000 RVs or whatever it is. Uh, but there's five, 600,000 RVs being sold in the, across the right. this year. It's like, why don't we just help everybody? So uh, everybody's uh, taken care of and understands all the ins and outs of the industry and what to look out for. And, uh, they were just getting frustrated with people being taken advantage of. And, right. So, um, so number one, let's just dive right in. Not asking for the out-the-door price. This is a mistake people make. They don't ask for this. And can you explain why that's important? Yeah, so pretty much because 
what a lot of dealers do nowadays, especially because of COVID. I mean, the RV industry has boomed for a little over a year now, since March of last year. And it is just constant, constant, constant. Now, what a lot of dealers are doing is they're tacking on a whole bunch of stuff at the very end in the closing office. Okay. So, yeah. Describe kind of the process you go through. Say I'm buying an RV. Okay. Kind of what are the steps? And you, and you said it ends with the closing office. So kind of maybe back. Yeah. Up. So pretty much. So basically, let's say, Tim, you're buying a camper from us. You are looking at a 2509 and Rockwood Mini Light. Okay. And so you we break it all down. And I give you an, uh, a price of, let's say, 28000 Okay. Okay. And so you sign on that. And when it comes to the closing office, they're going to – here's the tactic. So they get you a closing office and they – Deposit. Uh, yep. We figure out what we want. Um, I give you a deposit and then uh, – Okay, so then there's a little gap of time between. Yep, little gap of time. You, it's the big day. You're coming here picking up your camper. Yeah. Okay. You're inside. You walk. Do your walk through with the service tech teaching you all about it. You walk in and you sign your final, final documents to make it officially yours. You sign on it, and you get to this one part. Instead of twenty-eight thousand, now you're seeing thirty thousand, and you go, "Wait, what's happening?" What this is, is there's such thing called a hidden fee. And I'm pretty, pretty sure we get into this later on in, in, in the uh, webinar. I have a slide for that. <laughs> and so um, pretty much what you're going to do is you, they're going to say, well, we have these fees. We got a, let's say you're down in Florida. We've got a tire exchange fee because every camper is made in Indiana. We've got a tire exchange fee. We have an environmental weather fee. We have transportation fee. We have a pre-delivery inspection fee, a dock and title fee. Um, the list just goes on. They just make up a whole bunch of stuff. So there's a lot, yeah, a lot of stuff that can show up at the end here. That the expects. only fee that is valid is a dock and title fee because that's by the state. Okay, that's the only fee that should be valid. With us here, we have that. Now, with us all this environmental, transportation, and things like that, the pre-delivery inspection, for one, is absurd. You should do this no matter what. But certain companies, I mean, the biggest one, you know, initial CW, is charging over $1,200 for that. Wait, you're cutting out. What oh, you How many? That, so twelve over $1,200 is what these people are charging for uh this just to check your camper, make sure everything's working, everything's yeah, correct. Yeah. What, what is PDI everything? Or what is that? So the PDI, which that stands for, is your pre-delivery inspection. Okay, that's when they test everything: the water, the wires. You're testing, make sure all your options that you wanted is in there. It's clean, um, spotless from the inside to the outside. And they charge you twelve hundred dollars, which is crazy. That should be free. Well, okay? yeah, they, it's, um, it's supposed to be done. <laughs> Um, so I just put out in chat a download of this PDF. So you can get all of these uh, five example hidden fees that okay. uh, being pop up around the country. Yeah. So it's a one-page free PDF. Just download it when you get a chance. That way you don't have to write all this stuff down. So anyways, go ahead. So uh, PDI, and it's uh, that's uh, – it's free. I mean, it's supposed to be free. <laughs> well, think about it this way. It's, it's financed really – by the factory. I mean, it's kind of like the, the second wave of quality control by the factory. It says exactly we do our final quality checks. Then we send it out from the factory to the dealership. Then it goes over the road. It's kind of like one last check, you know, bounce it across the road, right? The dealer, then the dealer, it's in his best interest to check because he gets paid from the factory uh, through uh, warranty because it's all, all right. Warranty. So he can submit claims uh, and charge his full amount for his work labor. I mean, Exactly. You know, replace. So it's it should be <laughs> they're getting money. I guess what I'm saying is dealers are getting paid by the factory. Yeah. To basically, do this check. Exactly. Oh, okay. And a lot of people want to charge the the customer for it. Like I said, the, the company CW they they charge that amount of money. Um, transportation fees. So um, every camper 
is made in Indiana, Goshen, Elkhart, around that general area. Okay. And so they just don't magically appear to that dealer, snap out of the finger, which would be nice. Um, so there is transportation fees. Um, that's a California. I'd be like, probably like around like $4,500. Texas is probably $2,200 or whatever. But on top of that, they're taxing that. So you're paying even more money for that. I love it. I, I, I love it when I'm talking to a dealer or a customer, I'm sorry, out West. And they say, well, they told me they have no fees. Red flags are should automatically jump because they're lying to you right off the bat. They have so, like I said, that camper from Indiana has to get out there, let's say California, and they have to charge for that. Well, they call that bluff. All right, you, you got me. Yeah, we do have that. Now they're going to talk about uh, tire replacements. Okay, they say, well, these tires are no longer good because they travel across country. So here's two grand of changing your tires. No, <laughs> that doesn't have to happen. I mean, these tires can last you a long time. Yeah, they're called China bombers, but they can last you. But yet they want to they want to do all that replacement. It's just absurd. And it well, really yeah. upsets us here because of that. Yeah, speaking of what you said about transportation fees. So that's that's a good tip that you just threw out there. Yeah. Make sure that the dealer separates the transportation fee, the the delivery fee to California. under the tax line. Yeah. Cause you shouldn't have to pay sales tax on that. So right. That is say that's a couple thousand dollars. That's a couple thousand dollars. You shouldn't have to pay sales tax and that adds up quick. So yeah, exactly. You know, thanks um, Blake. These are uh, some good. Yeah, tips. definitely. You know, keep, make sure that's under the tax line. Have so you heard this, this any good stories uh, in the last week or so of um, any of these fees popping up that you've heard? About? Constant. Constant. So I had a gal, yeah, uh, was it two weeks ago down in Florida? Okay. Um, so she's buying a Wildwood Grand Lodge of 42 FLDL. Okay. And so she's down there and she says, well, the dealer here is char is cost is con going to cost me $75,000. Mind you, this camper is like 50, 45, around that area right there. I go, what? She goes, yeah, $75,000. And how can you help me save some money? I said, well, can I blow your mind here for a second? And I said, I got this camp here. We're here at, I think it's like $48,000. I got her out there. And that's including Florida sales tax. Okay. Cause that's collect for Florida sales tax. That's including that. She goes, oh, no way, no way, no way. So she sends her brother from Indiana over to us to make sure we're real. He goes, Oh yeah, you're, they're real. They're a real thing. I walked in it, got my hands on it, and I had the check right there. And it was crazy. I, I saved her about three thousand, thirty thousand dollars. Crazy. As, and they, they're tacking on all this stuff. That was just their advertised price. So that was before all of these hidden fees that they was going to tack on. Also, they even had oh, man. yeah, that was just the advertised price. Yeah. So, so the key I think is really. Ask for this and write, like you want to yeah. know what's included in your price. So uh, it's okay if there's a dock and title fee, which the state requires. Right. You need to know that that's going to be $550 or whatever the number is, uh, 370, you know, each state's different, but you need to know what that is. And I don't, I think you guys do this too, at RB yeah. Holders, but you spell it out in a sales agreement. So line by line, you know exactly what accessories you're getting on your model. Okay. Yep. You know, so all the all the little details does it have solar, does it have this, it, you know, all that should be spelled out in writing. Then ask them to spell out in writing exactly um, all the fees that you'll see at the end, like the taxes and uh, if there's a PDI fee, which hopefully there isn't, um, yeah. a walkthrough fee sometimes. Um, yeah, just any of this stuff. And, 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 and do this too. I mean, this yeah. is the perfect line. So let's say they tell you it's this price. Yeah. You sign on it, but make sure you have them put in writing. My deal, my price will not change by one penny. And if it does, I want my money back. And if they say no, run. Because they're going to get you at the end. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that way you get your deposit back. Because that's what we're seeing a lot too. These yeah. people are 
uh, getting stuck. And uh, it's it's pretty sad that they're taking advantage of it during this time when everybody needs a camper. And exactly. Now they kind of have these people that say, okay, well, they have multiple people in line for the same camper. So now they can kind of get away with it because like, well, I, no problem. I mean, if you don't want to pay the extra fees, no problem. You know, we've got, this, right. you know, we have this list right here and the, this guy, I'll call him right now and he'll be in here in the next two hours and he'll <laughs> buy it. So no worries. You know, exactly. See, like, so they don't care really. Uh, they don't have to care at this point. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's why you want to make sure that if you do uh, need to bail, uh, you have, you get your deposit back. So exactly. I'll give you a little out. Um, so that, because that's kind of how the game's played. It's, it puts pressure on you. Like at the very end, you're so excited. You've waited months potentially if you ordered a custom one, mm -hmm. uh, pick this thing up. So, there's been so in, in, in another thing a lot of people's doing is uh, we have a dealer that's an hour and a half, two hours away from us, a little bit more South. And he, we have, there's price increases. Okay. From the factory. Yeah. And that's, it, that's, that's happening like, all across all industries, some wood and all industries. And so especially when you're bringing in parts from China and, the shipping's gone up because of you know all the stuff and I mean everything. So right, and what and what does and what these dealers are now doing is they're breaking contract, calling you back, say, "Hey, I need you to owe me this more money." No, you sign a contract for this price. That dealer needs to eat it. Like with us, right. we have. I mean, just people still hasn't you no. Know, we own their camper again. There's let's say they ordered in January. There's been three price increases since then. We're not calling our customers back saying, "Hey, you owe me." No, four thousand dollars more. We're eating yeah. it because you're supposed to. <laughs> yeah, let, me, let me explain to the folks. So manufacturing is unique. I was mm -hmm. actually just out there on Monday. We were filming in some of the manufacturers' places out there in Elkhart, and it's very unique in that they have the right. Like the manufacturer has the right until that uh, RV leaves their lot officially and heads to the dealership. Um, that price. They, if they raise the price, that's the new price. That's what the dealer right. pays. The, right. trans, the payment transaction actually happens between the dealer uh, when that leaves the manufacturing lot on its, you know, before it leaves as it heads to the new dealers, you know, that dealership. So they have to pay that price. So even though uh, they sold it for a lower price earlier, they have to eat it, like you said. Exactly. And, and that's and dealerships know that, you know, like that's. <laughs> They know that it's going to happen, but man, it's happening so regularly. The increases this year that some dealers are just saying, "Hey, you know what? The, de the demand's there. The people are willing to pay it. Let's just pass that on if we can." And uh, and so that's why we want you guys to make sure that you're careful and exactly <laughs> you know, get the stuff in writing. So no, exactly. Yeah, and if it changed by one 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 penny, run. <laughs> so uh, don't be afraid to ask questions in chat. Um, Mike asked. I'm buying a 2007 Forester 3011 DS with 2,890 miles on it. Is that a good price? I'm not seeing the price there, Mike. <laughs> yeah. the price. I don't know if we'll be able to answer that one live, but uh, we can. I'll put up Blake. If yeah. you're, I'll put up your contact information a little bit, and then you guys can um, dialogue offline on real specifics. And if you guys get, yeah. uh, in fact, I was thinking about that. Some of you guys probably have used RVs that you're getting ready to sell or trade in, so. Uh, what yep. are your thoughts on that? Uh, um, so here's the thing. It's a crazy market. Yeah. Yes, dealers want your used, okay? But at the same time, if you sell it outright, like on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, uh, RV Trader, you can get a lot more out of it. Um, but yes, dealers do want your trades. We want your trades. Um, but again, if you want to make a little bit more money, try to sell it outright. It's a crazy market right now, and people are literally dying, tripping all over each other to get a camper. <laughs> um, let's see what three, uh, Tuesday I was in there on Tuesday and a lady was picking up a couple, uh, they drove all the way from the state of Washington uh, mm -hmm. trip of that little camping trip. But the, um, they had bought a uh, Rockwood five years ago. And she said uh, that she just sold it right before coming out. And she she made money. She made more money than she paid for it five years ago. Like, yeah, she made money on this thing like right now as a five year old. Yeah, we're seeing it all over the place. It's a crazy market. People are literally doing anything to get a camper. <laughs> yeah, so definitely uh, your best bet is sell it outright. Um, yes, I I know you guys could make a lot of money on used ones, but um, 
you know, it's nice to you know, help people out. And in fact, if are you actually, let me see if I can. Um, I'll put up your information now. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, all these questions are good, but something we probably just need to talk a lot about one on one and and things right. like that I can help I you out with. Like, I should want to figure out the NADA book price. Yeah. If you go to NADA.com, it's kind of like an average across the country. Um, but if you know there's specific pricing you want to figure out, like what's the value of my used vehicle, uh, get in touch with Blake. Here's his email, be right at RV Wholesalers and his extension. I'll put that up again later too. But yeah, um, yeah thanks for being willing to help people with like specific details on that. Yeah, you're very welcome. And um, yeah, the interesting thing is financing with RV. <laughs> Oh, you know, great subject. Financing. Uh, we kind of touched on pricing a little bit. Um, yeah. Financing so, different. Terms. So we're basically the middleman for the banks. Okay. We're doing all of their jobs. We're doing their jobs for them, making it super easy. So it doesn't matter if you're buying an RV, a truck, an airplane, a tractor, whatever. If that dealership sends you to a bank, that bank pays the dealership. Okay. So let's say you're looking around a thirty thousand. This is the big. Uh, yeah. The big dealer financing secret. You're telling us. You're gonna just like tell us the big secret right here. I'm just. I'm just going to tell you the big secret because it's okay. amazing. <laughs> and so, let's say you're looking at a thirty thousand dollar camper. Yeah. It's going to average about $3,000 that the bank is going to pay the dealership. Okay. Now, a lot of people has not heard about this because de dealers and stuff are hush hush about it. That's extra money in their pocket. Well, with us, we give it to our customers. Okay. So let's say you. So this you, money is like a, like a kickback or like. Yeah. A, maybe so a, it, it's a kickback, a reserve money, or. There's different oh, yeah. names What's for that? it. Dealer reserve is that what dealer you call it? reserve. Yeah. Okay. So. And so, what we do is we take it off the price of the camper if you finance with us for at least twelve months. It has to be at least twelve months per the bank. And so, with the let's say I get a cash buyer, Tim, you're wanting to buy a, a camper off me, but you want to just write me a check. Well, I tell you about this financing thing, and I say, what if I can? If you love money, what if I can save you even more? And you want to hear me out. So I, what I tell you is finance me for 12 months. Okay. <laughs> I give you this nice reserve to come off the price. What you want to do is as a cash buyer is pay it all off on the very first payment, except for the remaining 11 months. So Tim, let's say your prior, your payments, $200 a month. What you want to do is, is take that 200 times 12, which is like 2,400 bucks. Okay. And so what you want to do is, is pay on that minimum, pay it all off on there, except for that $2,400. you are killing off all the interest because it's a simple interest loan. And so all that extra is going directly to our principal, and your interest is calculated that daily. So if there's nothing there, it's gone. There's no interest. Yeah. And you're paying on that remaining 11 and on that, 12, on that very last payment, you're paid off, or you can refinance it, do whatever you want. Okay, yeah. So if you have a better rate through a credit union or something, yeah. you get the the big uh, kickback. Uh, yeah. you guys give back to the the buyer. No, another dealer is not going to tell you that because there's that's extra money in your pocket. But we are honest. We want you to have that money. I mean, the main reason why we do this, Tim. Yeah, is because a lot of let's say a credit union they'll give a dealer a credit a line of credit. A, you know, saying hey. Here's the money. Here we got proof he has money, but we're not going to give it to you till we have a title on hand. Like with us here, our banks don't um, accept that. Okay, you have to have the actual cashier's check. So if I help resolve all that, our owners, you know, 20 years ago is like, why don't we just give that money to our customers? And it has been a big thing since then. People absolutely love it. Well, I know. Like I remember the first time hearing about when they got that. Bank uh, dealer reserve check, right? Check, check, whatever you want to call it, from the banks, thanking them for writing uh, these deals. They were just like, "What is this for?" Like, right? <laughs> they in their um, their markup and their profit margins, and mm -hmm. pay all the people and do all the stuff they need to do. And then for this extra check to come in from the banks is like, 
well, we weren't planning on that. Let's right. That. That's really cool. But but yeah, so don't be afraid. This is what's cool is no matter where you're buying your RV from, don't be afraid to ask. It, it doesn't just have to be an RV. It could be a car. You go to your car dealer and ask, yeah. hey. I know some of, the guys, <laughs> uh, some of the guys that work with you, I know, have, have done that. In fact, yeah. did that on his last, um, on, he bought his, his uh, family car there. So, um, <laughs> yep. yeah, so go in, kind of hold that card to the end when you start talking about, oh, maybe, you know, maybe I will finance with you guys, you know, like, well, what, you know, instead of my credit union, maybe, yeah, what, how much of that would you split with me? Or I know you're getting a dealer reserve, you can call it. How much of that you're going to give back to me? You know, like let's split that. Um, exactly. And don't be afraid to ask for that. So, so it's a, it's not just a couple hundred bucks. You said you said thousands, like seven to ten percent. Yeah, seven to ten percent. You you have in your you can have in your pocket save on that. A motorhome, a hundred thousand. I mean, we're talking ten grand. Here. Ten grand. Yeah. <laughs> like if nothing else was worth it, uh, like this is a a really good uh, tidbit you're giving. So right. I hope, uh, yeah. So don't be afraid to ask for that. <laughs> don't be, don't beat up your sales guy too bad because half the like, sales guys, yeah, half the people don't know it. You can get more to like your finance and things like that. Like, no, we don't. We're not getting anything from the bank. Like we can't give you any more. Like this so, is I had a. It's crazy. So this guy was trying to compare me to another dealer, and I told him, "Say, I was actually in a close. Like I was on the phone. They're in a closing office, asking all these questions. Say, yeah. ask him about this finance discount." He goes. Oh, they can't do that. That's against the law. <laughs> I laughed because, guys, if it was against the law, we wouldn't be in business. We go. We have an A plus with the BBMB. We've been doing it for over twenty years. It's not against the law. It's free money, and we're giving it to you. <laughs> it's against the unwritten rules. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Shut us down. The internet goes out. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that's. That's cool. And I, one, I didn't realize until I was talking to you, uh, some of the finance guys in um, Dallas and those guys, mm -hmm. uh, what they're doing, like I always thought, okay, they're going to shop, you know, like shop, they have what, 12, 15 banks that you guys yeah. work with on a regular basis. So, you know, Bank of America, all the big banks uh, you guys work with for financing. And so a dealer will say that they're shopping to get like the best rates, which is true somewhat. But not only are they shopping to get you the best rate, they're really more interested in which bank is going to give me the biggest dealer reserve or the biggest. Right. Uh, so, so it's kind of the secret game. Of yeah, exactly. It's, it's a, the bank's know, like, play has, has a big game. We just know how to play it to save you money. Yeah. <laughs> the, the finance, they call them F and I guys or mm -hmm. guys, uh, managers are usually the ones that, pro that really know what's going on behind the scenes. Like, like I said, a lot of the sales guys, especially at car dealership stuff, they yeah. do that. What a lot of what, what a lot of dealers do is too, they shotgun your credit. So they send it to absolutely every single bank that they have, and they pick the one that gets the most money, and that tell you about it, and that hurts your credit in the long run. Oh, with, yeah. the, like with us here, we actually just analyze it. We send it to a couple banks, get you the best interest rate. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. And uh, I have a video with Dallas that we shot a little bit ago. It's only a couple minutes, but he okay. explains a little bit of difference between terms of RV financing stuff. Let me uh, pop that up real quick. So make yeah. sure we can hear that. Um, let's see. Dallas, come on. Okay. Here we go. Hey guys, Dallas Henry here. I'm going to talk to you guys today a little bit about uh, financing an RV, uh, a couple of the tips, tricks, things you might need to know. Uh, one big thing a lot of people don't know is, is when it comes to RVs is term. Uh, term with recreational vehicles can be a lot longer than what most people are used to, uh, especially financing cars and things like that. Uh, one big thing to remember is generally they'll go out to sometimes 20 years. I know that seems crazy to some people, but it's a, it's a quite a, quite a long time. They want to make that payment really manageable. Now with recreational vehicles, if you have pretty good credit, uh, longer term often means better rate, which is kind of flips everything on its head or whatever everybody really knows. Again, when it comes to cars and mortgages and things like that, because generally with those type of items, the shorter term generally means better rate. Okay, with RVs, remember that's not always the case. If you got pretty good credit, normally the longer term better rate. So that's one big thing to remember when you go into finance a recreational vehicle. Uh, so keep that in mind um, as you as you go. Again, just to recap, longer term, good credit. 
typically a little bit better rate. So keep that in mind. Don't be afraid of that longer term. Even if you want to pay it off a little earlier, that's okay. They are simple interest loans. Uh, at least they should be. With all of our lenders, they are simple interest loans. So you can pay the loan off a little bit earlier. Okay, if you guys so, so choose you want to do it. And you can apply more money to principal. That'll have you paying at least a lot, a lot less interest over the term of that loan, whatever the term you decide it is. Uh, once you lock in a deal with a uh, bank or lock in a deal with a dealer, um, you can you can change how fast you pay it off. You can change how much money you throw towards the interest and the principal and things like that. One thing you can't change is the rate. So remember that. Uh, you always want to get the best rate, um, and a lot of times that is longer term. Okay. Another thing to remember is don't ever tie your recreational vehicle loan to your house. A lot of people think, hey, really good rates with my home equity loan. Uh, put a lot of work into this house. I want to use that equity. Uh, not a real good wise idea. I'm not a financial analyst by any stretch of the imagination. But what I will tell you is um, when the proverbial hits the fan, you know, and, and things happen. Um, as so so many people know in 2020, uh, there's a lot of things that have happened this year that no one expected to happen. Um, one thing that can happen is you can lose your job. You can have time off, you know, things that you might not be getting the money you thought you were getting. So in that situation, the last thing you want to have happen is you not be able to make your RV payment and that be tied to your house because now if something happens they're not coming to just get your RV they're coming to get the house now too so don't risk your family don't risk your livelihood don't risk your finances by doing something like that it's something to, re to really remember <laughs> he, he explained it pretty well <laughs> yeah. good thanks um, one last thing before we move on yeah. uh, Judy was asking should a cash deal be the same as a finance deal so no, well, ma'am. I mean, no, that's kind of what you think. Uh, you think, oh, cash, you know, I'll get a better deal if I come in with cash. Um, we've, right. sold, we've worked hard. We've sold a house, whatever. We, we're retired. We want to uh, pay cash. So we don't have debt. Um, that's kind of what you explained earlier, though. Right. And so a lot of people think cash is still king. It's really not not the case anymore. It's because dealers are getting paid to, yeah. to get so your finance. Say you bought a motorhome, then the dealer's going to get 10 extra $1,000 in his pocket if he sells to a financed motorhome. Right, and if and I always use the same line. Um, if you love money, you wanna go this finance route because I'm saving you thousands no matter where you look at it and I'm putting more money back in your pocket. You're basically, yeah, it's it's basically, you're gonna throw away maybe a couple hundred dollars to get then, yeah. several thousand dollars up right. with this um, with the way the banks are set up. And the, ba it's, the banks are the ones making the agreement. They say it's 12 months. Mm -hmm. They said three years, you know, you would have to go three years, but they said 12 months. And, it, and it's the same thing, too. So let's say your credit unions, we get you a 12 year term, but your credit unions getting you a five. That's OK, because you can pay our loan off for of five years if you have the budget for it and still save you thousands on interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by going the longer term. Yeah, right. Good. Um, Mary's uh, question. Did you see that one about the Winnebago? Why don't yes. we just up? Um, could you get back to her via email? Yeah, please, Mary, email me, and I'm going to happy to break and go more detail with you personally on that. Yeah, we'll figure out that. That's a good question. Um, and then uh, first time buyer, what size should I buy for me? And uh, So for a couple, what kind of size do you recommend for like a couple? Just a couple. I mean, you can rock with mini lights, have a really good floor plan, uh, about 25 foot. Um, there's a couple different floor plans you can get for a couple. If you want to go bigger, I mean, there's there's tons of floor plans. I recommend recommend a rear living if a travel trailer or or whatever. But email me. I love to send you some options and things like that. And exactly what you're looking for. The Rockwood is a, a good quality brand. In fact, those yes. I was just talking about uh, that sold there. They brought their second Rockwood, and that's why she's like, we take this thing in the last. Like we beat it up. Like right. Yeah, you know, we get the heavy duty. What's they come standard with the nice tires. And mm -hmm. It's like. Oh, we we run the crap out of it. <laughs> you got a dog, and I mean, they they just like go up. And yeah, and it, up there. Rockwoods are great quality, especially the Geo Pros. If you're going to do more off roading, I mean, it's made for it. So, I mean, it, it's a great, outstanding camper. And there's kind of two. Um, so, you uh, let's talk about kind of where do you start in the whole process? Let's back up just a little bit. Yeah. So you kind of pick, you know, you have your different types of RVs. I always thought an RV meant a motorhome, but <laughs> that's the umbrella of, of 
everything. So mm -hmm. RV is considered a could be a travel trailer. Some people call them campers, pull behind. Pull behind. Then, then you got yeah. fifth wheels, which looks like a goose yeah. neck. Then you've got toy haulers, which has like a little deck. That comes garage. Or mm -hmm. it makes a ramp so you can park in the garage. Uh, you've got park models. If you're not, if you're only going to put it on a campground and leave it for the season. You're not park models, much, perfect. Get more room that way. Um, so you kind of pick out your size. You know, do you want it to be towed or do you want it to be driven? So then, so that's your first decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you have to decide, do I have a tow vehicle that can tow it? So that's where uh, we created a little thing called towingcalculator.org. Uh, just it's still being tested, but you guys can play with it and uh, the numbers are right. So um, go ahead and go to towingcalculator.org if you want to figure out how much can my SUV pull. You know? and, you, and you created that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> 76,000 lines of uh, entries in it from 2010. I don't go back any older than 2010. Uh, but yeah, you can put it in your truck or whatever you have. Uh, yeah. It'll it'll calculate it out for you. So you got to figure that out. Like if you if you already have a vehicle or if you're getting ready to buy one, make sure you you know buy mm -hmm. one that can pull what you want to want to do. So so then uh, the next big question is: Do I want it to be fiberglass sides or do I mm -hmm. want it to be more of a um, aluminum siding construction with wood? Uh, you know, kind of wood. Um, what do you call them? Wood framed. Wood framed, yeah. So uh, the rock wood we were just talking about is a little bit more expensive, uh, but uh, but it does have aluminum framing inside. Right. It's all aluminum welded together. Uh, the fiberglass on the outside is all compressed into. Which it. makes it lighter too. When yeah, aluminum it's framed. nice white light, uh, insulated, compressed, glued. You know, it's just a real solid wall when it's going down the road. So I mean, they both have advantages. Mm -hmm. And just you know, but um, so that, that that's kind of that's, what you yeah, that's a great example you showed there. That's then awesome. You, then you figure out your layout that you want <laughs> in the front. You want a bathroom. You know, like yeah, just kind of the layout. Exactly. There's just different, there's different stuff. Stuff. It's so overwhelming though. I feel bad for you guys because there's so many makes and models. Yeah. So kind of kind of start with those basics, and then know that a lot of brands are the same. Like if you find a I don't know certain brand name and uh, and you come to Blake and say, hey, just tell him what the floor plan is and, and some of the basics and he can probably match it. Yeah. And they're made by the same factory even, just they put different labels on them. They'll put a, like uh, uh, the big chain will have like their own name so that nobody can compare them. Right. The prices to another one, but it's made the same place and mm -hmm. uh, whatever. So. Yeah, and then you guys can call me, email me, whatever, and I, give me what you want. I'll break it all down. I'll send you some options. Go from there. Cool. Um, Michael asks, is it better to have financing in place prior to working with the dealer? Um, so with us, I mean, finance through our national lender so we can give you that big discount. Because let's say you get your own financing and expect a financing discount. That can't happen because your bank is not paying me, Okay. So go through us with our national lender so I get paid so I can pay you. Yeah, and and like in that case, uh, what you do is you pay it off in in 12 months mm -hmm. if you want to go back to your rate. Uh, right. Say it's a seven-year term, but you're getting like two and 3% or something. <laughs> here. Um, so then you can flip it back. You're really not out. Um, you actually save that way. A lot. Yeah, exactly. And no. then... Brenda's is also asking about the best size for national parks. Yeah, what is that? Um, I think the limit's like 36 foot. So anything under 36 foot, you'll be okay. You got that's what I remember hearing something like that. So and and camping is is such a blast. Like uh, we took our family out a few times this past season in mm -hmm. October, and I remember I took in a toy hauler into this little campground. I mean, it was a big campground. It had like 200 spots <laughs> or something, but. Uh, I remember like the first one was small, it was a little, uh, uh, wildwood and no problem. Got it back in the first time. It's like, Oh, awesome. So then I came in later that night, you know, like it's like Friday night, everyone's like all set up. I come around and I go to pull in with this toy hauler. The thing was like 45 feet long <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and I'm nervous to go cause like, everyone's there but it was the coolest thing like everyone's helping like they jumped up and they're like guiding me back and you know like 
uh, it was just a kind of a fun, like, <laughs> like bringing us in. I mean, it took me a number of times to jiggle it in place because the thing was so long, but um, it's not like, like, don't be afraid of it. Like, even with right. uh, class A motorhomes and everything, I mean, they've got so many, they have side cameras. I remember the first time I took the class C up to a campground, I turned on the turn signal. I was like, wait, you know, it was a big camera. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about running over the curb. Like, it was right, the, it was right there. I was like, it's a lot easier these days to uh, all some bigger machines around and and not you know have to have CDL licenses and all this kind of stuff. So it's yeah, it's a good time. For sure. Stepping in, and then we get some questions about you know is it better to buy used or new? I know that's a big question. So it all depends because used you don't get warranty. Okay, it's not like a car it doesn't transfer over after the first owner, it's gone. It doesn't matter if they own it for a day, it's gone after that. Um, or, I mean, that's why new, a lot of people go new, with news because you do get warranties and things like that. Yes, we think you can get an aftermarket warranty, um, but again, you want to, you know, really stay with new if you want that. Use, you just don't, a lot of people think you get inherited a lot of people's problems and things like that. So you just you really could be careful. Yeah, I know, uh, like, that campground, I think it was actually, that same time, so the first camp I brought in Wildwood, there was another couple, uh, Chris and Christy, that were staying uh, three campers down. Mm -hmm. They came over and they're like, oh, this Wildwood, that's just, <laughs> we were so excited to see something that matched their trailer. And I was like, oh, we've had ours for, I think it was seven years at the time. They bought it, uh, they bought it used uh, three years prior. Mm -hmm. so they bought a four-year-old trailer. And so uh, they're asking all about the new one. I was like, oh, yeah, it's like, and uh, they said, yeah, we paid 16000 for our, ours. Uh, we bought it like three years ago, uh, four years old. And um, then they're like, how much is this new one? And, like, I was embarrassed. Like, I was like, oh, well, they sell this thing at RV Wholesalers for 15500 Right. Yeah, you know, it's got the Bluetooth speed. It's got all the upgrades for the, you know, seven years of upgrades on it. And, uh, man, they were like, <laughs> I felt bad. <laughs> but, uh, can, they, can they spend so much more on yeah, <laughs> you know, there? They could have had a new and not had to deal with anyone else's problems and stuff. So, but, And we're going to get into that warranty stuff. So I uh, yeah. asked about warranties. Yeah, that's a good question, Judy. We're going to dive right into that and uh, explain that in just a second. Um, Axel asked, how much do they mark up diesel pushers? What percentage can I counter offer? Honestly, I mean, I can't, I can't really tell you that, Axel, just because I don't carry diesel pushers. So, I mean, I have no idea what other dealers' markups are and things like that. It's very difficult to kind of answer that question. Let's talk about pricing in general because I've seen um, so when I've been at the factories, most of the factories don't even put out like a sticker price. Like right. you know, a couple of trailers will come in and it'll say, this is the MSRP, and it's like this huge number. And sadly, a lot of people are even trying to get that number. Um and then about 35, 40% less than that is the map price. So that, that's the real number, you know, more, uh, more real number. The manufacturer will say, hey, this is the map price, minimum advertised price. Like we don't want to see this listed anywhere on the internet uh, right. for this, anything below this price. Otherwise you guys are in trouble as dealers. Exactly. And so a lot of people will, um, it's okay if a dealer has a lower price and sells it for less, but they can't advertise it. So they can, um, if we have a relationship, and that's why, like on your website, RV wholesalers, like you can't just get a quote. Like there's no prices, it's not because they're ashamed of them. It's just because, like this with Map, they're not allowed to advertise it. But if there's a relationship, meaning they they have your contact information, then at that point the dealer's okay with. Right. Hey, if you know this person, then you can tell them the lower price. Yeah, map price is basically. Uh, it should even be less than that. Um, that's why we use a lot of people. Map price don't see our pricing. Yeah, there's a big difference between map price and what the dealer actually paid for it, like the invoice price the dealer paid. Right. You never see that number, but um, so there's that difference, and then there's the difference, like a thirty-five percent difference between the MSRP. So when I, if I was you, if I were you, Alex. Uh, with the diesel pusher, what well, we've seen on the higher end ones, they're pushing up to that MSRP a lot of times. And I would make sure, one, you could ask them, what's the map price on this lake? Right. Is, 
you're, you're shopping around, you're seeing different prices, just ask that question. Then you can kind of see if they're really hedging <laughs> through that MSRP number. That MSRP number is really high. I mean, like really high. Yeah. And uh, I would, yeah, I would push hard. I know that uh, on diesels, um, there's probably not as big a market on those as like the class C's right now. And the class B's are just huge demand. So they can kind of get the higher prices. But I think with the diesel pusher, you probably still have a little bit of leg room to bring them down. Exactly. So I would try hard, you know, take some uh, lessons on negotiating. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hold back, just like, you know, do the whole uh, poker face thing. You, yes, exactly. Like I that. Usually lose. So just kind of when they tell you the price, just kind of wait for a while and <laughs> look at your wife, you know, and, and usually it's not a good deal unless you walk out once. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, anyway, so play that game. Hope that helps. Let's dive into the next big buying mistake, which is, let's see, we got the finance secret. Um, not checking out service and wait times. I want to, uh, one of the owners, the brothers that started RV Wholesalers, I want to go to him real quick because yeah. he's doing something unique. Uh, he took his office and moved it up to the service department about two years ago. And so he really wanted to kind of figure this out because this is a big deal. Um, making sure that you can get service. A lot of people don't, they get so excited about buying an RV that don't think about, obviously this thing's going to break. How does that process look? And don't be afraid to ask questions like, right. And, you know, run scenarios to these dealerships. Like, okay, if this happens and talk to the service department, it's not just the salesperson. I would make in the, a separate call and just say, Hey, uh, if I had just, uh, bought this, you know, like you can bank up a little scenario for them and just say, if I brought it in today, like how long would I have to wait to get it serviced? Or, you know, sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's let's go to David here. Let's see here. All right, this is David. Hey guys, glad to help. Uh, you know, I've I've kind of been serving people or helping people my entire life. It's uh, kind of how we were raised, I guess you could say. You know, to put other people first, take care of other people. So when we uh, started the dealership was sort of a natural for me, especially if you look at my teaching background. You know, I, I taught for 10 years. I've always enjoyed teaching people new things. I've always enjoyed helping people, uh, you know, both uh, professionally, personally, et cetera. You know, taking care of kids and stuff is was such a joy, such a pleasure. So when Mike and I opened up this dealership, it just kind of um, sort of wasn't even a choice. You know, we're going to we're going to focus on the people that we sell to. We're going to take care of them. Uh, we're going to treat them like family and again you know, that's that's just how we were raised i remember um, we've been selling for a few years and and um, we had the idea of putting a, a used unit on uh, ebay and it did really well we put another one you know and long story short through the winter months we had sold uh, quite a, not quite a few all of our used units and uh, in the spring we thought you know what what wonder if people would buy a new unit so we put a, a new unit on ebay and a crazy thing happened a guy from iowa bought it Put another one up a guy from texas bought it and uh, we thought man you know we've we've stumbled onto something here and i never will forget my dad um, uh, came in to check on us see how we were doing you know just to just to visit and we were telling him how how great this thing was right we we're going to be able to sell rvs all across the u.s and peers through ebay and um, i'll never forget he just kind of looked at us and he said uh, you guys started selling because of service right you did service first yeah of course dad so service most important thing yeah well how are you going to service people that aren't even in your state and it was uh kind of a low moment you know it sort of like sucked the wind out of us and uh, we we kind of regrouped for a couple of days and and thought about it uh, even prayed about it and then the uh, idea popped in our head hey what if we found someone in each person's hometown to take care of them and um, fast forward 23 years later that's our nationwide service network and uh, now we're able to sell to people all across the U.S., all across Canada, and uh, take care of every single one of them. But I think the thing we're, one of the things we're most proud of is that we've never had a customer not get serviced anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. You know, they've, they've, we've always been able to find someone to take care of them and uh, someone to meet their needs, you know. And <laughs> Heard it from the man himself. <laughs> yeah, neat, neat guys that run this place. Um, so 
Yeah. Let's... No, because I always get that question. It's like, okay, so if I buy from you, like you're in Central Ohio, it's like, mm -hmm. and it seems like the when I go on vacation, like the camper, say I uh, I buy local, um, the camper never seems to break down. Like I don't know if it's a Murphy's Law or what, but the camper <laughs> never breaks down. Like it never breaks down like, your driveway. Yeah, it's like I'm three states away. Like I don't want to go vacationing in my backyard. In fact, we were just trying to figure out this morning, like, hey. Where are we going to take an RV trip? Like, should we go to South Dakota, see the uh, Mount Rushmore? Should we go down right. to Tennessee? And you know, so uh, and a lot of people uh, get worried about that too. With us being in Ohio, and they're like, listening California or Alaska for God's sake. Yeah, and uh, you know, in California it gets hot, so the, the AC goes out, and it needs to be worked on. Well, the dealer there is like, "Well, bring it back to me." Let's say they purchased, I don't know, Texas or something. He's like, well, bring it back to me. I'll work on it. Well, that's kind of impossible. You don't live there. <laughs> and so, and, or he's going to say, we'll take it to a certified dealer and he can work on it if he's a good man. And well, they had the right to refuse his service because he didn't purchase from you. Right. And so with us, that's why we have this nationwide service network in place. I take care of you no matter where you are. We have service centers, mom and pop shops, whatever, to take care of you. Call us. We are there to take care of you. Even with like a Buckeye service guarantee, I'm sorry, our, our, our RBW bill pay, we're paying that bill, you know, under that first year, same thing under warranty, we're paying for it. So you're not using your extra money. It's us. We're we're going to fight for it. Right. Like, I've watched those guys in the warranty department and they do this every day. So they're like, they're really, yeah. they have a relationship with the people at the factory and it's still hard to get the money back from them. Exactly. So that's what we worry yeah, about. Yeah, and yeah, not yeah. Like, Individual <laughs> like trying to call us like, hey, uh, you know, getting punched in through to try to get to the, the right people at the factory and exactly bill reimbursed for a warranty issue. Um, so basically, with a new new one, you get what about a year coverage on the yeah. So it's a one year limited bumper to bumper, twelve year limited roof warranty, um, and then we'll pay anything into that, so you're not worrying about it. Now we're probably jumping again here, but let's talk about these extended yeah, yeah. these extended warranties a little bit. Yeah. Um, so when I talk about this, a lot of people, well, they put their guard up and say, tell me, shut up. I don't want to hear about it. And so I just kind of brought up that way. Like when you check yeah. out Walmart, like, ah, I don't need, I don't need, to you, don't, you don't think that up, you know, I just got told to hit deny. You don't want that. <laughs> so, right. um, because it's state of component, which is bad. Um, there's two different kinds. You got state of component coverage and you have exclusionary coverage. You're not talking brands. You're just talking about how the contract structure, how, how the contract structured. So and so was stated, which that one's not that great. It's bad. Exclusionary is good. One first. So stated, like what is, what's that mean? So what stated means is it only covers what's stated on paper. And Anything beyond that, it, it's not covered. <laughs> okay. So if there's a big long list here, I open up my contract, which let me see if I have one here. Uh, you know, like this one, right? Usually do exclusive, but say I open this up and uh, mm -hmm. and I read down to the paperwork. So all these things are listed here: this, this, the refrigerator, this, yeah. this, this, this. Right. Those are things that are covered. Right. And then, so let's say that your inverter, yeah, broke, which broke your refrigerator. Yeah. Well, your refrigerator's not covered because the inverter broke, and which broke that. So they're not covering a refrigerator. Yeah. Which is so. There's so many gray spots and stated component that uh, that makes it bad and confusing and hard and difficult and things like that. So write that down. Stated component coverage only covers what's stated. So uh, you'll look at the list and that's what you get covered unless something breaks, like you said, and breaks. The water. Exactly. Okay. What's the opposite? What's the other one? So the good one is exclusionary coverage. So what's really nice about this, what's stated on that is what's not covered, which is wear and tear that's okay it. like brake pads and that kind of thing yeah but it covers everything else All which right. is so, so nice not, so okay so the list is small but and it has the things that are not covered on the right case. so it excludes it's everything's covered except let's say a, let's say like your wear and tear items like a brake pad but it covers a brake mechanism not the brake pad uh very a scratch in a countertop it's not going to cover that it's a wear item yeah so, so whatever one you want, uh, whatever you uh, check this out, you want it to pay, you know, like you want a payday, like you want it to pay out when it's right. time, 
when that thing breaks, because it's not a question if it'll break, like when was it going to break? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much guaranteed. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, it's just because, I mean, you try taking a house down the road, like it's, it's a house on wheels. It's something's tending is going to break at some point designed, uh, to be bounced around like that. And then uh, you, do, but you can't, the expensive part is you like, you can't go to home Depot and just like, Oh, I'll, you know, that's the right size. I'll just stick that in there. Well, yeah, it doesn't run on propane. doesn't run on 12 volts. It doesn't, you know, like <laughs> those are exactly. And so that's why uh, these kind of coverages and yeah. So just make sure you check out, ask lots of questions, um, check out, uh, the actual, the people, the names of the, the contracts, the service agreements, extended warranties, whatever, <laughs> you want to call them, uh, and do some research on them as far as their rate, AM best rating. It's kind of like insurance, right? Uh, AM best ratings for these companies that back these up. And I know protective is one, you guys sell a number of them, but I know protective is kind of, uh, it's, it's a really good extra ride. You know, that's a very, very good company. It's kind of, yeah. And so for a really good one like that, I don't know, 10%, 10 percent usually of the of your price. So let's say you're buying a thirty thousand dollar camper, it's about three thousand yeah. dollars. Which I mean it really is nothing because let's say your slide seal goes out, which your factory does not cover your slide seal. So let's say that goes out and you don't have this coverage, it's about an eight thousand dollar fix. Okay. Because you're taking a whole slide out, they're replacing that, and then have to put the whole slide back in. Very pricey and very difficult to do. And so with this coverage, if it would be in a three thousand dollars, heck, they just covered two slide seals if that is something that happens. I mean, it's it's outstanding. Yeah. No, that's that's really helpful. Oh, the, there's one thing we need to warn you about. Uh so I was at a RV man, it was like a dealer's only mm -hmm. event, like a huge indoor show a couple of years ago down in uh Kentucky. Yeah, and I walked by a booth, and it was the title of the booth was "Warranty Forever," <laughs> like lifetime warranty. I'm like, oh, oh no, good, no, that sounds good. Like, who wouldn't want a uh, warrant? You know, like have their trailer protected for the whole life of it. <laughs> yeah. And the guy is like talking to my talking to my ear. He's like, oh yeah, it's great. Like this this setup is so good because uh, we put a deadline every year on them that they have to be in and get inspection and maintenance. Uh, on a regular basis. And then when they're in there, the good thing is these people, these customers will end up having to spend about $900 on average for every time, every year with you. For exactly. And because of our requirements to have them come in, otherwise warranty expires or uh, goes null and void. Right. I was like, yeah. That and and it's not, I mean, it's not free. They oh, have yeah. to, it's not free. They pay at least $200 you no know, yeah. a month on that. That's before they put their hands on it. Like you say, they put their hands on it, they're paying so much more. <laughs> service. And yeah, it's just a scam. Like my little antennas went up like that. If you hear lifetime warranty, it's crazy to me because they'll offer this lifetime warranty, but then they'll sit you down and talk to you about this extended warranty. Like, what what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was covered for life. Why am right. I? Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so be careful. Please, please don't fall for that one. Um, yeah. Man, good questions, good stuff today. Thanks for uh, uh, yeah. here, Blake. Uh, what yeah, is no, thanks for having warranty me. Warranty company, Michael asked. Um, Not protected that you have. That's a, that's a company we use. That's a very good company. They very yeah, easy to deal with. Active. You can kind of see. It. There you go. Yeah, that's a very good. Uh, they're super easy. You know. Yeah, and and you can. Uh, the nice thing about these kind of warranties, uh, if you say, "Hey, I want a different trailer two years down the road." They will. Right. Either, um, if you haven't had claims, they'll uh, prorate back the money that you put. So, you yeah, thousand dollars that and you didn't transferred, it. transferable. Yeah. I mean, it's very nice. So yeah, you can transfer it to your next one. Uh, you could sell it with it. You know, it goes with it if you want it. Um, yeah, so very cool. Uh, and even things like, I mean, I was looking through the fine print on these things, but they do like cover your. Uh, your food spoilage and they pay for your hotel for a few nights by yeah. on repairs and yeah there's a lot uh, a lot to it travel expenses up to $275 reimbursed per day for a maximum of five days for meals and lodging and pet benefit up to 300 reimbursement for pet removal transporting handling boarding expenses food spoilage up to 125 reimbursed for the loss of food I mean right. a lot of little stuff that uh, is really helpful when you're like in the moment and um, yeah so very cool
so that's uh, Ken Wartsky's um, and as you guys are uh, saying goodbye here, we're wrapped up. Uh, I'm going to put up Blake's information so that you can uh, reach out to yeah, you. please, Blake. And um, how about this? Since people have hung out with us uh, for an hour here, let's. I'm going to give them an offer. Like I, I know a lot of people aren't ready to buy yet, but if they end up uh, getting a hold of you with an email that says 500 in the title, in the subject, or in the body of it, yeah. can you give them a $500 delivery credit Yeah, uh, for the first two people that email you? Uh, Most definitely. And that'd be awesome as a way of saying thank you. Um, and if they end up buying the next day or two, um, that will be good for that. So, Most definitely. Cool. And uh, don't be afraid. If you just have questions, uh, just email Blake and uh, he'll hook you up. Here's his information. Uh, when you go to say thank you, goodbye, whatever, um, in the chat, uh, I want to hear, like, this is my favorite part. I love, like, at the end of this, um, after we're done talking, uh, reading through the text, the chats, and seeing, like, what your dream RV vacation is. Like, <laughs> hey, we want to get this RV. We want to, uh, one guy said, I, I want to take my granddaughter and go to softball games. Like, my daughter played softball, so that was cool. Yeah. Um, or I want to go to the Mount Rushmore. I want to go see crazy horrors, you know, like whatever it is <laughs> and open to do in a camping, uh, camping trip. Love to hear it. And, uh, man, have a great, uh, yeah. camping, uh, life, new life here coming up soon. So I'm any questions, guys, I'm please open. reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. Please reach out. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Thanks Blake. Uh, yeah, thank you. You're busy and you took a lot of time and I appreciate it. And, uh, we've learned a lot. Thanks for that big, uh, finance uh, <laughs> uh, you're, so, you're welcome yeah so when i um go buy an airplane all right take care have a good yeah. afternoon thank cool. you you too all right we'll see you guys